UFC 277 is on Saturday there in Dallas. Of course, headlined by the rematch between Juliana Pena and Amanda Nunez. And, of course, that interim flyway title matchup between Bram Moreno and Kai Car France. I want to start, uh, as we get into this preview, start a little fun topic. And so to give you a little backstory, I'm sitting there and so I'm, I'm working on lining up an interview with uh, Dustin Joe, Kobe, who's just coming off that great win there at UFC Long Island. And and I know how much of a, a golfer he is. And so I was thinking about, you know, maybe, you know, fun topics to bring up with him. And one of the things I, I brought up is knowing how much he loves golf is like, what would his bucket list for some be? So then it just kind of made me think about you can have three people over to watch the fights on Saturday. They got to be in the MMA community. Who are you inviting over? Okay. So I don't know if this guy counts. All right. Because he's no longer in the MMA community. But there's one person I would love to have on the couch and pick his brain, drink some beers, and get to know who he really is. It's Joe Silva. Oh, damn. That's a good one. I would love to hear about Joe Silva. He is such a recluse, and he's one of the most important people in the history of the UFC. A guy I wouldn't include, but I, because he kind of fits the Joe Silva mold of prying information out of him, would have been Lorenzo Fertitta. And I just would want to figure out why he decided to sell the UFC when he did, because that was a very sudden thing. And that's something that's like – that is a story that is undercovered, you know, the end of the the Zufa era. But Joe Silva would be one of my guys on the couch. Dude, that That's a great pick, bro. Like that, right. I, I wrote down a ton of names. He was definitely not one of those names. Okay. So my number one choice to me is easy. Uh huh. We know this guy's personality. We know he's a fun guy. I know, you know, I, I, I believe he, he likes to enjoy, enjoy the milk, uh, the, uh, adult cocktails. Give me Michael Bisping, bro. Oh yeah. The, Michael Bisping's a great pick. He really is. I mean, he does a phenomenal pot. He's got a phenomenal personality. I think about it sometimes like he's one of the most lovable guys in the UFC, but there was a point in time when he was a big time heel, <laughs> yeah. a bad guy that people booed. And and it just speaks to his personality. Michael Bisping would be a phenomenal hang. That's a great choice, my man. My number two, I don't know if he's on your list. And the reason I put him on my list has to do with the co-main event. Henry Cejudo. Oh, you're going to have to cut him off. <laughs> you're going to have to cut him off. But what, what, why are you picking Henry Cejudo here? Technical analysis of those two guys in the co-main event. And uh, and Henry is, is becoming, obviously, he's making his comeback. But, you know, when you hear guys talk about who work with him inside there, a fight ready there in Arizona, I, I think from a fight analysis aspect, I think it'd be fascinating to sit there for three hours and hear how Henry Cejudo breaks down a fight. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, that, that would be awesome to hear him. It, it's a great call. He's going to say something. He's probably going to be tweeting. I'm going to go with uh, the comedy guy. Actually, who's your third pick? Who's your third pick? This was a tough one for me. Uh-huh, before, yeah, I don't want to steal it. I go thought ahead. about going Danny Sabatello. Oh, I thought about him too. But I I was like, oh, man, if you put him and Bisping together, yeah, that might get a little, a little rough. Yeah. So I went Paul Felder. Oh, that's a great pick. You got, you got a better broadcast crew in your living room than on <laughs> air that night. Oh, God, that's a good pick. I love it. This is what I got. Okay. So, uh, this is tough. People that are not making the cut. Pat Berry, not making the cut. Thought about it. Okay. Good personality. Justin Gaethje, good personality. Mm-hmm. Not making the cut. Amanda he- Rebus, really liked her interviews. They should be a good personality at the party. Now we got three people, and I don't know who I'm going to cut. These three people I know are going to bring the party are going to be entertaining. I'm going to have to cut Tai to Avasa. It's a, it's a tough one. He he a, he was on my list. You know why yeah. I cut him out? Why is that? I've got carpet in my living room, bro. I know. <laughs> and I feel like, and, and look, so when we're doing my show last Saturday, people are talking about shoeys. Like, bro, I'm not doing a shoey. I don't care if that shoe is straight out of the box. I'm not doing it. I feel like a tattoo of us is basically going to goat you into doing a shoey. And then I'm going to have to explain to my wife why our carpet smells like beer. <laughs> yeah, you will 100% be doing a shoey with him in the room. I love it. So you need a party animal. 
I thought about Patty Pimblett, but I'm going to go Molly McCann. She's also okay. a fan of Everton, my favorite soccer team. She's, she's the life of the party, and I'm going to bring her in. And then my number three, Ray Longo. I'm going to bring in Ray oh, Longo. Yeah. I think he's going to be hilarious. He's going to bring the comedy. So we got Joe Silva for the information, Molly McCann for the party, and Ray Longo for the, for the, the comedy. I, I feel like I've got kind of I've got the analysis of Hudo, but why why do I think Sahudo pounds him back? By the way, there's something oh. that tells me. So I, I, well, we have kind of seen some videos where you know he might yeah. have been a little intoxicated. Bisbing, Bisbing and Felder and me together. You know who I almost thought about picking? Who? Just because I want to know what tweets he almost hit send on. Uh, John Jones. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. I uh, there's also like I the two people that didn't make my list that I kind of wanted was Forrest Griffin, who's my favorite fighter of all time, okay. and uh, CM Punk, who love him as a wrestler. I uh, associate with MMA. If I just wanted to get inspired, I'd probably put bring along uh, Volkanovski and Rose Namajunas. Every time I listen to their post fight interviews, I just want to like run through a wall and work hard and achieve everything in life. They talk so much about work ethic, and I just feel so inspired. I feel like if I have them in there, it would probably do more for me than a Tony Robbins discussion. All right. Who would you, if you could invite one promoter over, who would you rather have on your couch watching the fights with you? Dana White or Scott Coker? Dude, it's Dana White. He's, he's, he's a better hang. Okay. I feel like Scott would be funner, though. Why? I feel, I feel like you start throwing some cocktails. Scott looks like that guy who, you know, he's low key. Get some cocktails in him. He might start talking. Yeah. And the thing is, Scott is someone who has more stories that people don't know about than Dana. I, I feel like Dana more. would be reserved. I don't know, man. Yeah. I don't unless, know. He, I mean, unless he really knows you. Yeah. I mean, that's true. I mean, I, uh. I did see him give those guys two hundred fifty thousand dollars, so I'm gonna try and be his friend and make him feel young, and, and maybe he'll give me a bag of money. 